Hello and welcome to another Performance Architects How-To. Performance Architects is a business and technology consulting company that helps companies initiate and sustain big changes in their performance management and business intelligence environments and process. This video along with others on our channel should help provide some additional insight as you embark on or continue along your EPM and BI journey. Head over to our channel after this video or come back in the future to learn best practices, hear overviews, and take part in lessons we have designed to help you. We are focused on continuing to develop this community and we welcome any recommendations you might have for future content. Thanks and enjoy. Hello and welcome to Performance Architects How To. My name is Chuck and in this How To I will discuss how to automate the forecast with Oracle Hyperion Planning. Before we jump into the how, let's first review some points regarding forecasting in general. Forecasting in the most general terms is the process by which organizations prepare for the future. Many organizations use the annual budget process as a tool to do this. They use Hyperion planning or some other enterprise tool to do the budget but still consider forecasts to be secondary and build them infrequently using spreadsheets and other desktop tools. However, more and more organizations are beginning to focus less on the static budget and more on the continuous forecasting methods. This approach provides better visibility in preparing for the future. A forecasting approach called forecasting to the wall is often used by organizations. With this approach, forecast months, shown here with green blocks, are forecasted to the end of the year. While this approach can be very useful in comparing the forecast to the budget, it is really not effective in providing a future vision. This is because late in the year, like for the third quarter forecast, the forward outlook is limited to three months only. More effective in providing future vision is a concept called continuous forecasting. With this model, forecasts are executed more regularly, or as this model shows, each month. This example also shows a 12-month rolling forecast where no matter what month you are in, you are always looking 12 months ahead. Many organizations are moving from a traditional budgeting model to a continuous forecasting model or flex budgeting model. So what would prevent an organization from implementing this kind of model? Why would organizations struggle to implement this process? Typically it's because this type of continuous forecasting takes resources and it takes time and many organizations are unable to free their employees from their operational job component to execute continuous forecasting activities. So what's the solution? Whether you forecast to the wall or execute a rolling forecast, automating the process allows for an accurate and efficient forecast that does not require large amounts of resources or time to execute. So how do we do that? The first step is to determine what forecasting methods are needed. Typically, organizations utilize anywhere from three to ten methods. Some examples would include using the budget, averaging the existing actual data, using the number of pay periods in the month, or using the prior year or prior 12 months of actuals to drive data based on trends. Also, you would notice that one example here says manual. There are definitely going to be times when certain items cannot be mathematically derived or predicted, so it's always good to provide the ability to manually enter the data if needed. Once you have determined what calculation methods are required, then you're ready to translate these methods into mathematical expressions. This is an opportunity to proof your methods and show that you can be mathematically derived. Here are a couple of simple examples. In these examples, the yellow represents actual data and the orange represents the forecasting periods. The first example shows the budget dollars for the year and how the budget is simply dropped into the out months of the forecast. The second example averages the dollars for the in months and then puts the average into each of the out month periods. This example shows a bit more complexity. In this example, the ratio of last year's actuals to the year total is utilized to derive the dollars for the out months of the forecast. The next step would be to assign methods to your accounts. Based on the type of account and which forecast method fits the account best, Hyperion Espace UDAs are typically used to assign each account with a method, as shown in this graphic. You will also see below a more real-life application of this concept. 
In this model, the UDA called FYTDPY, circled here in red, represents the forecast year-to-date prior year method. There are times, however, where method assignments need to be more dynamic and may need to be changed more frequently by multiple users. If this is the case, the methods can be stored as data items instead of UDAs and then provided to users via web forms as shown here. Step four is to create the scripting. This may sometimes be easier said than done depending on the complexity of the method. In this example, the Hyperion S-based CalcScript syntax is setting the forecast equal to the budget. The script is first fixing on the out months for all departments and then setting the forecast equal to the budget for all accounts that have a UDA assignment of FBGG. This next script example is putting the average dollars from the existing actual data into each out month. Specifically, it derives the number of out months and then uses that as a divisor into the total amount of existing actual data. This example gets a little more complex. Here, the out months of the forecast are being set to a ratio of last year's dollars against last year's year total. So once our scripts process the data, there are always going to be situations where data needs to be modified. For this, there is step five, which is providing a mechanism to make modifications. This is typically done utilizing a web form as shown here. In this example, the forecast is shown in the form for a specific department and the user can modify as needed. We often see that organizations require more granularity in assigning forecast methods. Specifically, some organizations have the need to assign methods by account, but also by department or entity. For this, it is very possible to set up Hyperion planning to have override capabilities. In this example shown here, the user can choose a specific department and then choose a forecast method to override the one that was chosen for the specific account. The user here is choosing to use the last month's actual method for the hearing aid account instead of the default account method that was assigned. So, in summary, Forecast methods can be automated utilizing Hyperion planning to provide an accurate and efficient planning process. This automation can provide a trend-based, flexible forecast that requires limited time from users. Thank you for joining and please visit our Performance Architects How-To channel for other videos on enterprise performance management and business intelligence solutions.